Let's talk about Mustang suspension. For years, I have given people information on how to make a stock Mustang suspension handle better. And you can work within the confines of Ford's original design, make a few improvements here and there, and really end up with an excellent handling car. I drove my Mustang that way for years and was very happy with it. Today, our specific topic is idler arms, or in the case of these three, roller idler arms. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So the first question you may have is, what is the difference between a roller component and a stock component? Well, there are all kinds of rubber bushings in the front suspension of a Mustang. You can find them in the spring perches, you can find rubber bushings in the stock idler arms, and while a rubber bushing from the factory is an inexpensive way for them to allow for parts that are supposed to move to move, it really is not the best option for a performance situation. In the case of a stock idler arm, now I don't have a stock idler arm, all I have is these three roller arms. And let me get this out here and be perfectly clear. I was not given these idler arms. I also did not pay for these three idler arms. These are actually on loan and I will be sending them back to Open Tracker Racing Products where I got them from. The reason they sent them to me is so that I could do a video for you and give you some information on what the difference is between a stock idler arm and a roller idler arm, what the difference is between their budget roller idler arm and their fancy roller idler arm, and why it is you may or may not need one. So first, let's take a look at what an idler arm even does. Move these two out of the way. We're gonna hold this here. This is a Pitman arm. Now, this is not a Pitman arm from a Mustang. I didn't have a Mustang Pitman arm, but the way it works is the same concept. So I'm able to show you how it works and why any of this even matters. So your steering box comes in and your Pitman arm attaches to it. On the other end of the suspension, you have your idler arm, which attaches to the frame. And this pivot and this pivot are lined up. So the pivot that happens at the pitman arm is the turning force from the steering wheel into the gearbox that is turning this arm. And as it turns, it moves the pitman arm. Now, the Pitman arm is going to attach to a drag link, which is, for all intents and purposes, a bar that connects this point to this point. And as we turn the steering, these parts pivot together. And they move together. And so that drag link moves back and forth as you are turning the steering. The shaft that's coming out of the steering column and going into the pitman arm is a solid steel shaft with bearings around it. So there is no flex. It is just turning and the arm is held into place and it is turning freely. But with the idler arm, if we go with a rubber type bushing, yes, the rubber allows it to move. Now again, this is a roller, but I'm using it for demonstration purposes. The rubber will allow it to move, but it will also allow it to move in other directions. You can get up and down flex, you can get side to side flex. As you are hitting road imperfections, that rubber can move in ways other than the turning motion that you get from a bearing. So the biggest advantage to a roller idler arm over a stock rubber bushing is it turns exactly the way it's supposed to, but it doesn't deflect in other directions. Now, if rubber was good enough for Ford in the 60s, why does it matter? Well, this is a performance part. 
This is designed to improve the overall steering and handling of the car. And so anything you can do to get the steering and suspension to move in the ways that it was designed to move without flexing and moving in ways that it shouldn't move is always going to result in a better handling vehicle. So let's talk about this a little differently. Let's say this was rubber and let's say we're driving down the road. Now this piece, it goes on the passenger side of the car and let's say you hit some potholes on the passenger side of the car. That's going to translate force from the potholes into the tire. That tire is going to translate that force into the spindle and it's going to force the tie rods, which are ultimately going to put pressure into your idler arm. Now, the idler arm can't move because you have a drag link going from here to the pitman arm. So as you are holding the steering wheel, everything is staying true there. But if this is rubber, it can flex, it can cock, it can move around. And that can cause a slight steering change on the idler arm end. Now, this component was developed for racing applications. And in a racing application, you are definitely going to need little to no flex in your suspension components. But even on a daily driver, something that is going to be driven in the real world, you are going to notice an improvement by going with a roller idler arm. The other thing that you will see a significant improvement with is just smoothness. That rubber is, is flexing and it's, it's not really turning easily and smoothly. Whereas having a bearing on the idler arm end, similar to the bearing that's in the gearbox end, is going to give you a nice, smooth turn back and forth. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that rubber is there for a reason. That rubber is designed to help return the steering to center. And while there's some truth to that, that is not the best way to return the steering to center. I've always recommended to people, if you are going to drive any kind of a performance application with your Mustang, that you need to put a performance alignment in it. And that means throwing out the stock specs that Ford gave out in the 60s. One of the specs that I tell people to add is anywhere from two to five degrees of caster. Why do we do that? Well, it helps the car handle better but it also helps your steering return to center. So if you're putting a performance alignment in your car, it doesn't matter that the rubber bushing that helps return to center is no longer in this component because the caster is going to do that job and ultimately you're gonna have a better handling vehicle because of those caster improvements. So let's take a better look specifically at what I have here and what the differences are between some of these components. First of all, this is the odd man out. This is a 6566 roller idler arm from Open Tracker Racing Products. It's just your basic run of the mill roller idler arm. And like I said, on a 6566 car, this is going to be a great upgrade if you are using stock suspension. Now, obviously, if you're using something like rack and pinion, all these components get removed and you're doing something totally different anyway. But if you're wanting to take your stock suspension and bring it up a notch and have better steering feel, have less issues with bump steer and some of the other steering issues that can arise from rubber bushing flex, this is a great way to go. Open Tracker Racing Products sells these on their website, and I'm going to put a link down in the description. Now, I'm not getting any kickback from them. I'm not getting any kind of compensation or anything like that. I just believe in the products they sell, and so I was more than happy to do a review of their products just to give you a better idea of what they offer and what the differences are in the components they offer. Now here we have a 67 through 70 manual steering roller idler arm. They look fairly similar, but they are definitely different components. This is Open Tracker Racing Products budget roller idler arm. 
And this is what they refer to as their Trans Am roller idler arm. Well, this idler arm is a significant improvement over the rubber bushing. It is still not the improvement that this one is. So this uses what's referred to as a gusher bearing. Now it is not a roller bearing. It's not rebuildable, but it is greasable. It won't flex. It won't move around in ways that it's not supposed to, like the rubber bushing will. But it's also fairly hard to turn. It's taken me a fair amount of effort to spin that. Now, this is recommended for your basic budget build. You don't have a lot of money to put in your car. You definitely want to upgrade the steering. But you just can't quite afford this. This is recommended for anything that you want to last the test of time. John at Open Tracker Racing Products refers to going with this setup as basically making this a non-wear part. He has installed a couple of these in his vehicles and did it well over 20 years ago and the idler arms are still working flawlessly. There is no signs of wear. They're doing great. They also work with several racing teams that have had a similar product to this in their cars for over 10 years and no issues. They've never sold a set of replacement bearings because the part basically no longer wears because there's not a lot of force on it and the bearings are rated at 2,900 pounds. Now, as I showed you before, this one's stiff, takes quite a bit of effort. This guy spins freely. I don't have to hold it tight. I don't have to work it hard. I can just spin it around and you get a nice, smooth steering action. You have a part that's rebuildable if you ever needed to rebuild it, but the reality of it is you're never gonna need to rebuild it. So ultimately, if you are running stock steering in your classic Mustang, I recommend upgrading the rubber bushing idler arm to a roller type idler arm. And if you have a 67 through 70 vehicle and you can afford it, I would recommend the Open Tracker Racing Products Trans Am version of the roller idler arm. If you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I would love to get back to you, answer those questions. If you have any ideas for future videos or things that you would like to see, whether it's a review or a project or any of those kind of things, again, down in the comments. And I hope this video has helped. I hope that this review of this product has given you a little more information of why you would want to go with a roller idler arm which version of the roller idler arm you're probably going to need. And I hope that the information I have provided helps you out. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. And so that drag link moves back.